Depending on who you ask, facts have become kind of whatever you want them to be in the year 2024. This has started for years ago, but in 2024 it's still true. Facts are not facts unless you believe them. There are misconceptions everywhere, especially in video gaming, and especially, especially in MLB The Show. Some people believe what they want to believe. Some people have theories. Not so much conspiracy theories, but theories. Either way, we're going to tackle a whole bunch of misconceptions in this video. Today, you will be informed. If you find me informative, funny, cute, charming, other things you'd find on a dating profile, hit that subscribe button. Like, of course, and comment down below other misconceptions at any point in this video that you think I might have missed. On Whiteboard Wednesday, we do anything but play MLB The Show in this video series. We just talk about it, make some jokes, and have some fun. So without further ado, let's get on to it. By the way, homies in the Discord helped with this video. Not everything you're about to see on the whiteboard is from the homies, but a lot of it is. So if you'd like to participate and have a chance to be featured in future videos, Discord gets the first crack at it. It's in the description. Hit that link. Join up. Have a good time. This is going to come as a shock to some of you, and with all due respect, some of you just stink. No matter what caliber of cards you have or use, you stink. That was a little aggressive right out of the gate, and I don't 100% mean that. I think everybody is capable of improving if they learn the ins and outs of the game and put the time in on the sticks. But the misconception that you need to have the best cards in the game to be successful is just false. It is not true. It is the opposite of a fact. And I will refrain from citing content creators who, for the memes or for the content, go into ranked seasons with all silvers and golds and still make World Series. A lot of the content creators are very talented. I'm not that good at the game. I'm good at the game, for sure, but not that good. I wouldn't even try it. What I am instead going to talk about is people who just use their favorite players. Not everyone wants to use the collection rewards. Some people may never sniff the Babe Ruth card this year, and that's fine. It's your prerogative. Play the game how you want to play. But you do not need the best cards to win. I promise you that. Do the best cards theoretically make you better? I guess, of course, they do. A card with max vision will probably be better than a card with terrible vision. But the great equalizer in this video game is the swing. I say all the time, use the swings you like. There's no better example of this than in Battle Royale. In Battle Royale, you could be comparing two cards side by side. One has incredible power and might have the better attribute spread on paper. Another one you know has a great swing that you enjoy. Screw the card that looks better. Take the swing you enjoy. Use the cards you're comfortable with, because in the end, that's going to lead to more success for you. Also, if we're going to get super duper precise, there's really no such thing as like a best card. I know you can go on Show Zone where we can use our eyeballs and assess that like 99 Babe Ruth is the best hitting card in the game right now. Show Zone has a true overall that is, and a meta overall, that is certainly relevant and correct. But a lot of the times we're just comparing cards based on our own preferences anyway. So just forget what people say, use the card you want. I feel as if even talking about this next one kind of even gives it more relevance, but I will promise you, with absolute certainty, based on my experience this year. Being a content creator that SDS has a relationship with does not give you better pack luck, because my god, my packs suck. I have pulled a few diamonds, of course, mostly low 85, 86, 87. I did get very lucky. Pull one Corey Seager. I'll, I'll give you that one. I pulled a Corey Seager. That is an uncommon diamond to pull. But if content creators had pack luck, I'd be pulling stuff willy-nilly, and I simply do not. Check my, my specialty packs. I pull no rare rounds. None. Zero. Nil. It would be a fundamental imbalance in the game if a hand-picked selection of folks got special perks outside of, like, physical stuff. Like, yeah, clearly I have a bat hanging up up there. But I'm talking about in-game physical things. That's not physical. That's not tangible. It's virtual. Virtual is the word I'm looking for. I digress. It would be a great imbalance if some people got select treatment over others. It's just, it's not true. I mean, hate content creators if you want, but you're watching this video, so thank you, you're a hypocrite. This is a very interesting one. We can do a whole video on this, and maybe at some point in the future we will. There is a misconception in the community that flipping is dead. I wouldn't quite say it's dead. Dying, yes, but it's still got breath. It's not dead yet. There's a lengthy history of quick sell values being just destroyed and plummeted, Margins are super thin. There are so many players on the game now, and everyone knows, or a lot of people know anyway, how market flipping works, that it has become increasingly more difficult to find consistently high margins on flips. So what does that mean? It just means you got to flip harder, flip more aggressively, back flip, front flip, side flip, any type of flip you could think of. Stubs have been increasingly hard to come by this year, 
And the assumption by SDS that we're all committed to playing this game on the marketplace while not playing the game in the baseball game, I don't really like that. I didn't buy this game to also play Stock Market Simulator. I played this game to play this game. That is not me poo-pooing anybody who flips. I flip when I have time, I guess. It's cool if you flip. It's a great way to make stubs. I'm proud of you if you're no money spent and flipped your way to Babe Ruth. That's an awesome accomplishment. But flipping is like a unintended secondary minigame in MLB The Show. I will expand upon this to include something else from the Discord. Somebody else in the Discord said that the cap being removed actually had unintended consequences for flipping as well. Because one of the best things to flip in previous years was diamond equipment. It would go like hotcakes because everybody wanted their cap to be so overpowered. That type of flipping is more dead because caps aren't in Diamond Dynasty anymore. And diamond equipment is not flying off the shelves like it used to. SDS is clearly trying to de-emphasize how many stubs we can get from flipping. They're making it harder to flip. Doesn't mean it's dead though. And if you're not flipping, I suggest you at least try it. If you do it smartly, you can come across some free stubs. So this one is an inside joke on my Twitch channel. If you haven't stopped by the Twitch, twitch.tv slash kdjtv, hit the notification bell because I don't have a consistent streaming schedule and you won't know that I'm streaming unless you have that bell on. But I have a channel point redemption for Draft My BR Team and it gets abused because I often lose in BR. And one time, someone, he knows who he is, he drafted me Ha Sung Kim. And guess what happened? I went flawless with a team with 97 or 98, whatever he was, Ha Sung Kim. Ha Sung Kim, one of the worst swings on planet Earth. Maybe the worst. But somehow, he led my team to glory, and it was incredible. The misconception here... We're gonna erase the Ha Sung Kim part. That was just a joke of funny. The misconception here is that I can't go flawless. And not me, I mean the greater I. You can't go flawless. Yes, you friggin' can. It is all-star difficulty. I understand for some, that might be a harder difficulty to play at. But largely, that is like the base difficulty for Diamond Dynasty. If you play in Diamond Dynasty, you're playing an All-Star. That means you can get used to the pitch speed. All you have to do is have a good strategy. We're not going to get into the specific strategies. There will be, at some point in the future, my BR tips for this year. I'm still working out the kinks. I have not had as much success in BR this year as I have in years past. But again, I digress. A lot of digressing in this episode. You can go flawless by having a smart draft, by being patient at the plate, the most important thing you can do, and just being on top of your pitching. Stop letting pitchers pitch too long. Take them out as soon as there's trouble or as soon as their energy hits yellow. It's that simple. Those decisions alone will make you a better BR player. That's outside of your thumbs doing the work. I promise you can do this. Keep trying. It's a misconception. More people in this community can go flawless than, than who think they can. That was a tough sentence to say. This one right here is going to bother a lot of people. This is an extension of the first thing we talked about. And before you all get upset in the comments, let me explain. Am I happy with this year's direction of the game? No, absolutely not. Am I upset that they're making us pay for so many damn packs with very little programs to earn them in? Absolutely. Will I let SDS know that, if given the opportunity, outside of this video, of course? I certainly will. In years past, has SDS been more no money spent friendly? Oh, it's not even a question. It's actually upsetting how far we've come since that day. However, because you don't need the best cards in this game to win, technically speaking, I believe the show is not pay to win. It isn't. It simply is not. Could it be much friendlier to no money spent players? Yes. Should it be much friendlier? Yes. Do I wish it was? Yes. Am I, again, unhappy with this game's direction? Yes. But this is still not true. Both things can be factual at the same time. Please don't hate me and look at me. Look, I just explained myself. Be logical. Be reasonable. Don't hate me in the comments. Shield Woods is the worst place ever created. You should never play there. Nor should you play at Capital Line. Play at real stadiums. Play at nice places. Play at Ship It. Don't make me upset. Shield Woods sucks. Misconception. It's not fun. That's it. End of topic. End of topic and end of video. So I leave you with this question. What do you inaccurately believe? Give me some more of your MLB The Show questions. Maybe we'll do a follow-up to this video at some point in the future. There are a ton of misconceptions out there in the community. This video can't be hours long. So we're stopping it here. If you enjoyed Whiteboard Wednesday, thank you so much. Make sure you hit the like button. Show your support. And if you want to join the Discord again, it is linked in the description. We have a ton of different channels to talk about a lot of different things. And of course, you get some sneak previews and the ability to have input into videos like this. It's a great time. Make sure you join. Thank you for making it to the end. I love you all, and I'll see you next time.